And this image is going to give us an opportunity to experiment with that most recent, latest and greatest of the blur filters, lens blur. So go up to the filter menu, choose blur, and choose lens blur. It's so radical, not only does it have just gobs of options along the right-hand side of the dialog box, but it's rendering its preview exclusively inside the dialog box. But notice how much room this preview gets. And you can scale the dialog box, by the way, if you want to. You can make it bigger just by dragging the bottom right corner of the dialog box, like so. And then you can zoom in if you want to using the standard navigation keyboard shortcuts and so on. Now notice there is a preview checkbox. It only affects the preview inside the dialog box, by the way. And notice that by default it's set to faster as opposed to more accurate. This only affects the preview. It has nothing to do with the final effect that gets applied to your image. In general, I recommend you leave it set to faster and only if you want to get a sense of exactly how the effect is going to look when it gets applied, then select more accurate because it takes a long time for this preview to update. All right, for now, we're going to skip depth map. And we're going to move right along to iris. Now, lens blur is simulating what the image really looks like when the camera is not properly focused on a portion of the image. And in this case, we're affecting all of the image at once. So lens blur is all set up with these iris options here to simulate an actual real life camera. And these shape options correspond to the shape of the iris how the aperture is set up inside the cameras. So by default, it's set to hexagon. So in other words, we have six blades that are expanding and contracting to allow more or less light in. But I could change that to, for example, triangle. And you have to be zoomed in to see this effect actually occur, to see the difference in this effect. So I'll get pretty darn close here. Notice that we're seeing these sort of little triangular wedges of light here, these triangular refractions as a result of the light coming into the camera. It's a marvelous filter. It's a very, very well thought out filter. So notice the difference here between triangle and for example, hexagon. Very, very different effect that we're getting inside of this image. It's completely up to you which one you wanna choose. It's all about what kind of effect you wanna achieve. Certainly you're gonna notice the effect more when you use fewer blades than when you use more blades for what it's worth. Now I'm going to switch down to triangle so that we can keep a good eye on what's going on here so that we can really see the artifacts that are being created by this filter. Radius adjusts how much blurring is occurring, just like the radius value inside the Gaussian blur dialog box. So bigger radius means more blurring, a smaller radius means less blurring. Now what if you want softer blurring? Notice this is pretty hard blurring if there is such a thing. We can really see those artifacts, really see those edges. To soften out those edges, you would increase the blade curvature. Curve your blades more inside of your aperture. That's how it works. So if you really, really want something very, very soft, then you would go with a high blade curvature value. I'm going to keep it low, once again, so we can really see those edges, so we can keep an eye on them. And then rotation affects the angle of the aperture, so the angle of the blade. So notice the triangles are sort of rotating around here as I change the rotation value. These are all options that you adjust to taste for what it's worth. There are no rights or wrongs here. So just have fun, goof around. You also have the option of adjusting specular highlights. I'm going to go to a lighter portion of the image here where we have this nice variance between the light clouds and the blue, blue sky. Now, specular highlights are light portions of an image that billow. They occur naturally when the lens is not focused on a certain portion of the image. So areas where you get a nimbus or an aura or a corona, if you will. And you can create these specular highlights by increasing the brightness value and decreasing the threshold value. But decrease the threshold value ever so slightly. You can increase the brightness value quite a bit if you want to. And I'll go ahead and press shift up arrow a couple of times to increase it quite a bit. And then tab the threshold. And notice that for each increment, if I just press the down arrow key, I will see a difference in my specular highlights. So each increment of threshold makes a big difference. And now you can really see those triangles inside the image. And you can see that they'll change in angle as I modify the rotation value here. 
So you can really see those triangular patterns inside this image now that I have specular highlights going. So if you do want your nimbi, your auras, your coronas, this is how you create them, is using the specular highlight options. Finally, you have these noise options down here in the bottom right corner of the dialog box. And these allow you to match film grain. So if one portion of the image is blurred and another portion is not blurred, you may use this first noise option to match the film grain. And you don't need much noise. I tend to use values under four to get just a little bit of noise. Because if you really go high with this value, you're just going to get a ton of noise throughout your image. And that's going to start to look a little weird. But it does permit you to match the film grain of your image without having to go to the add noise filter, without having to visit a separate filter. So it's nice that these values exist. The distribution options, uniform and Gaussian, Gaussian will result in a wider disbursement of noise so that you get more noise effectively out of your image. Looks much noisier to have Gaussian selected than uniform. And then monochromatic just assures that your noise is black and white instead of being all the colors in a rainbow, instead of being multi-hued noise. So that's basically what's going on inside the lens blur dialog box.